Hello, and welcome to Study Topics. My name is Leah, and I'm a PT exam prep teacher from Vancouver, British Columbia. This week, we will be reviewing when it is safe to exercise and when it is not. It's important to know that regular exercise throughout pregnancy provides health benefits to both the mother and the child. The body goes through a cascade of physiological responses to acute exercise during pregnancy compared with pre-pregnancy. We see increases in oxygen uptake, heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, tidal volume, and minute ventilation. As important as exercise is, it's important to know for your exam when exercise is contraindicated. I'm going to put a list of signs and symptoms up on your screen. Take a second to write down which of the following would be absolute or relative contraindications to exercise. Let's review the answers. Pregnancy-induced hypertension or preeclampsia is an absolute contraindication. Gestational hypertension is considered a blood pressure above 140 over 90. Now both chronic hypertension and gestational hypertension can lead to preeclampsia, which is a severe condition after week 20 of pregnancy. Symptoms include high blood pressure and protein in the urine. This can lead to serious complications for both the mom and baby, if not treated quickly. Exercise is a key factor in helping reduce the likelihood of gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. Uncontrolled type 1 diabetes is an absolute contraindication. Any condition that is uncontrolled is generally not appropriate for exercise. Twin pregnancy after the 28th week is a relative contraindication. With twin pregnancies, you will want to consult the obstetrician to see if they are safe to continue with exercise. Next up is gestational diabetes. This occurs when hormones from the placenta block insulin. This causes hyperglycemia, or high blood sugar, which can damage the nerve, blood vessels, and organs in your body. Gestational diabetes usually occurs between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. Exercise is a key factor in helping prevent gestational diabetes. It also helps manage it if your patient has already been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Incompetent cervix, also known as cervical insufficiency, occurs when weak cervical tissue causes or contributes to premature or the loss of an otherwise healthy baby. You need to treat these patients with absolute caution, and therefore exercise is contraindicated. Last is low back pain. As with any musculoskeletal condition, exercise is often the cure. So exercise with low back pain during pregnancy is absolutely indicated, with the caveat, of course, that it is musculoskeletal in origin. So, how did you do? Other aspects of exercise during pregnancy you want to consider include the FIT principle. Check out our video, Exercise Prescription for the Pregnant Patient. We will link it here to learn more about exercise prescription. If you found this helpful, please like this video, or send us a comment to info at ptexamprep.ca. Thanks for joining me.